welcome to our episode number three of the Glow Guiding in Love, Providing Opportunity to the World podcast. We have a lineup for you today. We wanted to make sure that we bring good resources and good information to you. And as I continue to unfold my story, hopefully this will be able to help you to identify with what domestic violence truly is, and then also jumping on the cause of how we can eradicate domestic violence. We know that our cause is, or that our challenge is 20,000 people to gift $50, and that brings us a million dollars. And again, I'll say this, that's not going to completely eradicate domestic violence, but I'm saying that's our overall vision, our overall mission, and as we continue to lay those bricks we will lay one brick at a time, one brick at a time, one brick at a time, bringing those, um, like I said, those resources in and, 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 and ways of coming up out of domestic violence, healing domestic violence or healing the survivors of domestic violence and offering a hand up. So um, in today's episode, it is entitled uh, My Pursuit of Happiness Story. And I just want to talk about what happens as you um, not are just on the other side of domestic violence, but the road of traveling and how you get there. Um, so, um, again, I said that I'm going to be really transparent with my story. When you uh, go or you experience uh, domestic violence like I've had from childhood, you start as an adult and, and even throughout your teenhood, you start finding ways of coping and ways of, um, I want to say, anesthetizing the pain without even knowing it. You want to, you're, 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 you're feeling like you want to take yourself to an area of numbness. And my choice of drug, I would say, for numbing was becoming a workaholic. Um, and I didn't even realize it. And again, it takes um, understanding and it takes just educating yourself on what this really is and wanting and desiring a way out. So not only was my choice of drug, and I say a choice of drug, not only becoming a workaholic, but it also was love because love is actually a drug. And when you find yourself going from relationship to relationship to relationship, you realize that that is part of your mechanism for coping. And so I just want to read something to you. Um, well, I'm going to talk a little bit about my pursuit of happiness story. Um, and then sometimes you'll see me uh, you know, looking down and just making sure that I, that I stay on task because part of um, what happened to me becoming a workaholic is part of why I, um, a part of why why we're here, why I'm, why I'm telling this story, and why I'm why I'm talking about this. Well, when you become a workaholic, you kind of um, forsake everything else. You don't even know that that's what you're using to cope. So um, I'm just gonna read this to you, and then I'll discuss it a little bit. But uh, my pursuit of happiness story, I call it blessings in the midst of the pain. How do you pursue happiness when all you've had to endure is sadness and pain? Is the happiness you think you are pursuing really a coping mechanism, a numbing, a drug to cover the pain? What do I mean? Well, when you are using a coping mechanism, you can, I mean, some people use drugs, but like I said, workaholism and, and love is actually a drug. I became a workaholic. I was racing 24-7 to build an empire. But boom, in 2008, it was January 28th. Actually, it was a wintry cold day. I will never forget this. I was on um, the freeway, and everything that I've been pursuing and everything that I had been working for came to a halt when a lady hydroplaned into me, into, actually she hydroplaned into my gas tank, and she knocked me two lanes over, and everybody from, that's from Michigan knows that um, 96 going downtown at 8.30 in the morning is a, it, it's, it's, you know, it's a bunch of cars. Well, anyhow, she, she, um, she hydroplaned into my gas tank, knocked me two lanes over. I went up the embankment, and I hit a tree. The tree collapsed and covered the car until I came regain my consciousness, and I walked from on top of the hill, in, I mean, in an incline, went around to the other side of the car and saw my mother and I thought her leg was broken so she looked at me and she said do you think it's going to roll at that point I kind of shook my head and looked and the car was still in a it was still in, in drive so as soon as I grabbed her and we fell to the ground the car slid back down and it totaled in in, in, in traffic 
I say that because the first day I didn't feel anything. But maybe four or five days later, I woke up and everything hurt. Every single thing hurt. And as I started going to the doctors, when they started rolling out everything that had, that it, that had happened, I, they, they took me off of work. I couldn't pursue my businesses. I couldn't do anything. Being a workaholic and focusing just on that, that's what had me, that was my engine was driving, 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 driving. So um, I noticed that in, in one of the episodes I was rocking a little bit. See, and I, and I shared this because I want everybody to understand, domestic violence affects the whole you, okay? And I'm, I'm tying it in together because becoming a workaholic and using that as a coping mechanism, that's all I was doing just chugging, chugging, chugging away, and then all of a sudden, boom, I, have, I had two years of rehab. And still today, I'm still coping with a lot of the effects. So sometimes you'll see me rocking because, and in the next episode, we're going to talk about how disabilities don't have to stop you. And I'm just showing you that when you know that you know that you know that you have a purpose, you don't let anything stop you, no matter what it is, no matter if it's the hands of somebody fighting the, um, doing something to you, hurting you or rather is, you know, like I said, using work and, 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 and other things as a coping mechanism, you do not stop. You keep going. You, you, you keep finding ways of overcoming those challenges. And so, um, like I said, between the different injuries, the loss of, um, <clears throat> the loss of self-confidence, income, and really just, just being at rock bottom, um, it just kind of, I had time to, to learn how to get my body back in order. And so um, I, just, I just wanted to share that story with you because in order to know where I'm coming from and why I'm so passionate about healing and about bringing about change and, and bringing about a hand up, I need you to know who I really am. And, um, you know, it's, 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 so that's my, my pursuit of happiness story. It didn't stop me. Today, I may be injured and, and, and bent up a little bit, but I was not broken, and I wouldn't allow that to break me. Um, I wanted to talk also just a little bit about um, the workaholism and the love being a drug. Okay, and when you use those type of coping mechanisms, that's not healing. That's just covering up the issue. It, it, it's not healing. So um, talking about workaholism, and workaholism is being compelled to work long and hard, forsaking everything else. Love as a drug, love, love is, stimulates the same as, or the same part of the brain as a drug, okay? And so love is a powerful drug. Falling in love stimulates the same part of the brain as the actual drug. In the moments immediately following the use of an illicit drug like cocaine, the brain levels or the levels of serotonin, dopamine, and nephrephrestin, I can't pronounce it, but I'll, I'll, I'll spell it. It's N-O-R-E-P-I-N-E-P-H-R-I-N-E, -E -E, okay? It skyrockets, and it causes feelings of euphoria. It's a high, okay? So when we're talking about, you know, some of the questions that we'll be addressing in our up-and-coming episodes about, you know, why, you know, why did she stay or why did she go back into another domestic violence relationship or why, 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 why? We need to dive into some of the issues that are actually, you know, that are, that are, that are present, that are there. And once we become aware of them, then we can address them, okay? So um, I just wanted to bring that to you and, um, and this is why we need to break the cycle. But we can't break the cycle if we don't have some light on the actual issues. So that's my part of uh, uh, pursuing my happiness, and we'll continue to unfold this as we continue to go. So thank you for watching. And now we have our segment on Man Talk. I have here joining me today Rodney Hobson, who is and who holds a master's degree in pastoral counseling. He has a specialty in the areas of anger management, depression, self-esteem, rape, sexual and physical abuse, substance abuse, domestic violence, and just to name a few of his areas of specialty. Um, he has also authored a book called, Do You Really Believe What You Say You Believe? I thank you for being here and joining me today. 
Thank you so much, Liz. I'm glad to be here. Thank you. Um, I think uh, we, we laid the groundwork in our last segment, or our, our first segment, about domestic violence. And we want to get a little bit deeper and kind of dive into the issue and start pulling it apart. Um, because our focus here is not just to talk about the issues, but to actually bring some resolve, bring some, um, some, some hands-on practical things that, um, first of all, awareness of domestic violence, and then understanding well, first of all, understanding what domestic violence is, and then we'll start bringing some, some clarity, some understanding, and some help to the table. So we don't just want to talk about it. We want to actually um, do, some, do some, uh, some counseling here as well. That is great. And the thing is, we would like to start off with defining what is domestic violence. Mm -hmm. Because in my time of treatment and practice, I found that people have a variety of ideas of what that definition is. Okay. And so what I will begin with is giving you a textbook definition of it, and then we'll get into the actual practical aspects of what domestic violence is. Okay. This one definition of domestic violence is domestic abuse is a pattern of behaviors used by one partner to maintain power and control over another partner in an intimate relationship. It happens to people that are married, living together, and who are dating. But the aspects and behaviors of domestic violence are physical harm, arousal of fear, preventing a partner from doing what they wish or forcing them to behave in ways they do not want. It includes the use of physical and sexual violence, threats, intimidation, emotional abuse, economic deprivation. And many of these can occur at any one time in any relationship. Now, what I wanted to ask you is that what is domestic violence to you since you have experienced it and developed a knowledgeable perspective of that definition? Well, um and in my being transparent, because I think that is exactly what's going to uh, separate us from any other forum, any other platform. And when you went over that definition and you start labeling out the different um, ways that domestic violence is perpetuated against someone in an intimate relationship, I sat back and I had to think for a minute because that's similar to the list that John Walsh put out when he talked about what domestic violence was and which gave me a wake-up call because until that point I didn't I understood domestic violence was a physical something or another you know somebody in a relationship controlling you through physical I didn't understand right. the all of the aspects and, and and as he listed out what domestic violence is and if you're if you're in a situation where any of these things are present or any of these circumstances are present any one you are in domestic violence well out of his list Eight of those were my circumstance at that time, mm -hmm. and that was my wake-up call. So in that, each one of those things I've experienced, um, and, 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 and that's something when, you, when, when they say one or more, but when you look at your situation, and again, I want this to be a wake-up call for somebody as well, because each thing that you've listed is my definition of domestic violence. Okay. And then some. And what I found out in treating women they came to the treatment with many definitions of what uh, domestic violence is. For example, one lady told me that domestic violence to her was walking on eggshells. Mm -hmm. She said she had to walk around the home and be careful of what she said because if she said the wrong thing, her husband would blow up, mm -hmm. would criticize her, mm -hmm. and might even get physical based on what she said. Is that something that you've experienced? Absolutely. Um, and, and, and the eggshell part of it is that you walk on eggshells all the time because it, it, it doesn't matter what you say. You can't get it right. That's what okay. we have to understand. You can't get it right because one day your red lipstick is too red and your no lipstick is too bare. So there was no, you know, so I understand that eggshell um, uh, um, philosophy. So that's actually a power over what a person may think and what a person may say. 
and affect that person emotionally. Another example is she stated that he used to tell her where she can work, what she can do, when to come home, and those aspects of domestic violence showed a, a power and control over, again, what she was thinking. Mm -hmm. When we look at that, do you believe many women experience that type of domestic violence? Absolutely, I do. Absolutely. Um, where you can work, um, you taking too long coming home. Um, I mean, anything can happen. You know, your the, the, the traffic, the snow. None of that's taken into consideration. But again, I said in the, in the first episode, why do I have to a, explain as an adult? Um, I'll ask, what did I do wrong today? Mm -hmm. and, and it may not even be a verbal, what did I do wrong today? Because anything, you know, the the um, there's a, there's a song about a superwoman, and she talk about the the coffee being too hot or the coffee being too cold or it, yeah. it, it was just some reason and it was what I had to understand and learn is that it wasn't it wasn't me it wasn't I couldn't do anything to make it better in that situation mm -hmm. um, because it was actually everything that was going on with the other person got you got you so when we're trying to define what is domestic violence we have this textbook definition, but we have people out there who have created their own definition of what it is. And again, I'll cite another example in terms of treatment where I had a young lady. She said that her boyfriend hits her. But she said that's OK, mm -hmm. because that's how he shows her that he loves her. Because what that means is, He's telling me what I shouldn't do, what I should do, and that's a form of protection. Now, in her head, in her mind, that was not domestic violence. And, and, and that's why I'm, I'm, I'm so excited that you're here and um, because you can help us to now understand all the aspects of that. Because now I never thought that it was right, that it was okay. Um, and, and some people do, but now you go back to that person. What's going on within that person that I feel that it's okay for me to be hit, that it's okay for me to be treated in this manner? That's why I say, you know, um, I want us to shine that light so that we can start to think, first of all, and say, wait a minute, I deserve to be treated better, you know? And, and, and oftentimes, your self-esteem is, um, you come into the relationship, and a lot of times, I call them predators, a lot of times they come because they see something in you. They see something that is, is lacking in you, like your self-esteem. And a lot of women suffer from self-esteem issues. So, um, so I'm trying to say that when, when she says that it's okay for somebody to hit her, he's showing me that he loved me. It's something going on in her that needs to be addressed. Mm -hmm. And when we talk about that, don't you think that Somewhere in her upbringing, she was either shown or taught that that was an acceptable behavior. Absolutely. That it was okay. Absolutely. So how, <coughs> I guess, Excuse me. can we define or redefine to her what that is when in her mind it's right? And I'm sure many people that might hear this, they are experiencing situations where the boyfriend or the husband is yelling, getting angry. Mm -hmm. and showing some type of intimidation, but it's okay because he loves me, and that's the way he shows me his love. In your experience, how did you deal with that? Well, well, well first of all, the, 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 the benefit that I had was that I watched my father love my mother. Okay, um, I had some deficits growing up because... I did have low self-esteem. I did have, um, and I'm just going to just be honest about it, I had ignorant family members that talked about me because I'd always had weight. I always, you know, I was never a, a thin child. So that damaged my self-esteem. So um, 
I, and so I, in, in, it's going to be different in, 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 in different situations where, you know, I watched domestic violence from my mother's first husband. I watched domestic violence from when I was three. Um, I mean, I'm sorry, from, like I said before, from womb till I was three. So I saw dramatic, and I, I don't know um, if it was the episode that we talked about me watching my mom being stabbed. Right. Okay. Right. So I, I saw that. I, I saw that type of um, a relationship. But then when she remarried, and I saw how my stepfather, and I never called him stepfather because he treated me like his daughter, and I loved him just, just dearly, but I saw him love on my mother. So I knew that hitting, you know, wasn't okay. Mm -hmm. But I still had that um, that that self esteem issue where I did allow some, some I saw some red flags in early on in relationships that I should have knew you know I should mm -hmm. I did that but had my self esteem been intact I don't believe that I would have I would have allowed it as long as I allowed it. When we talk about a woman's self esteem, there are some men that will take advantage of that. Or let's, let me reword that. Look at that as a sign of weakness or a situation where I can take advantage of it. For That's example, it. this definition says, by one partner to maintain power and control over another partner. You connect that with having low self-esteem. So if I see that and I see where I can take advantage of it for it to be self-serving, to benefit me, so I tell you what to do. I tell you I don't like this. And if you don't do it, and I'm not going to get physical, but I'm going to yell. I'm going to belittle you. I'm going to, you ain't about. Mm -hmm. Would that be connected with domestic violence? Absolutely it is. It is connected in domestic violence. And I, and I think I bring a unique perspective to the table because now at, at, at this juncture, I have um, I've been through bouts of domestic violence. So so it never like when I was in um, domestic violence where um, there was physical abuse. Then I was in domestic violence, got out of there, escaped, and I call it 007 escaping because I had to I had to escape from that. Then I went into mm -hmm. I went into mental um, domestic violence. I went into um, uh, psychological domestic violence but I'm saying that each time I went into those different relationships and I can name five and I'm going to be honest about that I'm gonna, I can name five and each time the the root cause the root issue inside of me did not get healed okay name one you say you can name five but just name one just for example so that people that are listening particularly women mm -hmm. because again there are many people, men and women, who have formulated their own idea of what domestic violence is and the experience. Because mm -hmm. many will not even agree with this definition that I've read. Okay, so let me go into um, a specific story. Please. Uh, okay, so I do throughout my journey, you know, and it's never, it's never I met a monster and I fell in love with a monster. It's never that. Mm -hmm. It's always you know, um, somebody that in some way you connect with, in some way they, they do something for you, you know, as far as even um, uh, um, commun being able to communicate, you know, or we can build something together, you know, and, and, and the person, the, the, and I, I just believe it, and, and until we prove it differently, I'm going to continue to believe that that person does that, you know, he didn't just start you know, I'm going to start with you, and I'm mm -hmm. going to start arguing and fussing. No, it's been a pattern. This is what, you know, and we'll get into that later, but it's been a pattern. So when I was in a relationship, and um, we'll call this gentleman Mike, okay, um, we, we, we met at work, and, and you know, we, we hit it off, and, you know, we had, um, you know, we, we started building relationships, started dating, build a relationship and such. Um, and, you know, as the relationship got as we went along in a relationship, he started to get um, his his tone changed. Mm -hmm. Instead of being complimentary, it was you know not completely critical, but a little bit at a time, and a little bit at a time, and a little bit at a time, till it it you know till it got that I was you no know, this is not right. I'm repeating this pattern again. I'm I have to I have to get out of this. This is not okay. But because I wasn't in a healthy place, I didn't know how. Okay. Because I had watched my mother be stabbed, I thought I had to escape. 
So I never knew how to say, this is a bad relationship, or this is not working. I didn't know how to do that. I would literally, wherever I was living, I would pack up and I would move. And we all know what a task that is. Yes. But I would move. I would try to change jobs. I would do whatever I had to do. To, 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 I didn't know how to do that health, in a healthy way. And I say that it wasn't, it wasn't, and it, and it was, it was not a, um, it was not a, 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 it was, it was the right decision to leave because he killed his next girlfriend. Mm -hmm. He shot her over her own keys. And so when you said that this was not a healthy place for you, can you give some type of clarity on that? Why was it not a healthy place for me? Yeah, define that, kind of give that some I, I wasn't healthy because, see, I used, and, I, and I, I learned this later on, I used work, so I became a workaholic, and I used love as my drug. As my drug. Okay. That helped me to anesthetize all of the pain and everything that I was going through. So instead of me stopping at, a, at some point and saying, which I finally did, but stopping at some point and say, you know, I need to take a sabbatical for relationships, I need to, you know, go into therapy, I need to get myself to a better place, I did not jump to another relationship. So that was your temporary means of escape? Temporary means of escape, my, my, uh, I said, my, my choice of drug. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. To anesthetize the pain. But I was really good at work. So that was something that I mm -hmm. was in control of. You know, that was something that I could control. I want to see if you can relate to this. Mm -hmm. Back in my day a little bit, I was seeing this young lady, and I saw her a couple of times, and she made this statement. Mm -hmm. She said, Rodney, you too nice. Mm -hmm. And my head tilted, and then she left, and the next thing I know, she was dating this guy who was physically abusive to her, mm -hmm. but she was okay with that. Mm -hmm. And it took me a long time to process that, mm -hmm. because in my mind, that's what women wanted, mm. how they wanted to be treated. They mm -hmm. wanted to be treated nice. But this particular lady found that particular behavior, mm -mm. Mm -hmm. mm -mm. Have you ever experienced that yourself or met women who also was that way? I, I, have, I haven't experienced the fact that I, you know, that I was drawn to somebody that was treating me bad or that was harsh or anything like that. That part, no. But um, I think when you've experienced domestic violence, it, it's, it's familiar to you. And I don't think it's consciously familiar to you. I think it's, it's, it's familiar to you. And um, I, I, just, I just go back to the point of, first of all, we have to come into the awareness like what we're doing now, we're giving information mm -hmm. so that you can start, you know, having some information in your arsenal, come into awareness, know that there's some re resolution, knowing that, that that gut feeling inside of you, we have that sense inside of us that says that it is wrong, you know, we, we have it inside of us even when, even when the situation is, is going on and, and you're making excuses and you're doing all these things, we have to learn how to listen to that gut feeling. Mm -hmm. You have to know how to listen to that gut feeling, even if we don't know what, how to get out of it. If we don't know those things, um, that's what we're bringing this podcast for, so that we can start to have some healthy resolutions and to heal. We need, we need, it, it, it takes a lot of healing. It takes a lot of healing for me to get to this point 30-some-odd years later to say, I want to tell my story. I want to provide some resources. I want to help people to not have to go to a home every day and it be hell and not a haven. And that's what the podcast is all about. And it's almost time for us to go. And I know. So let me just say this. Yes. Again. Mm -hmm. And this is a key phrase maintain power and control. Mm -hmm. Not just to establish it, but yes. maintain. Yes. That, would be the that would be the purpose of at least the domestic violent person in this relationship. Because again, it can be a man or a woman, and definitely we'll get into that somewhere down the road. Absolutely, okay. absolutely. But this is this has been uh, this has been wonderful um, because 
I know that, and, and it's something that I'm that I'm working through as well. I went back into therapy when I decided to do the podcast. Okay. I went back into therapy because I wanted to make sure that I'm coming from a healthy perspective. That I am, um, that I'm able to be transparent and open without it make without it um, taking me back to any right. any any bad place or anything like that. Right. But I I, I just want to make sure that. Um, you know that we're bringing some some genuine information so that we can help some people because again when I saw John Walsh on that episode and he talked about domestic violence I had some semblance like you said of what domestic violence is um, but I didn't know all of the facets of it and I just listened to um, a, a interview with Kerry Washington she was the ambassador for um, for the um, the Purple Purse in 2014, mm -hmm. and she talked about financial control and about it being about your finances. And people say, "Why didn't she leave?" That's not always easy to do, because it did not take a day to get into that situation. So people say, "Just just leave." Practically, what are my practical steps to leaving? And that is a loaded question, which we are running out of time. But that's yes. something we're going to have to get into, because many okay. people always ask, why didn't you leave? You must, it's easy. Just pack your stuff up and go. We're going to talk about that, because it's not that simple. And I appreciate you saying that. And thank you all so much for watching. Hi, and welcome back. We are here with Herb Talk today. And I am Dr. Liz, your host. wanted to talk to you about All Cell Salt. And the acronym for all cell salt is ACS. And the reason that we bring the herbs to the podcast is because we are talking about healing your mind, body, and your spirit. So we have to make sure that our body is in great working condition. Everything, everything that we need to heal ourselves or to correct a challenge in our bodies comes from planet Earth. And all cell salt is a great, and I take it every day myself, so the things that I'm bringing to you are the things that I use as a regular regimen. Um, earlier I talked a little bit about, um, about the accident that I was in and, you know, Looking at me, you wouldn't be able to tell, but I do want to just let you know the, the challenges that I have overcome, and I do that in a natural way. Um, I was, well, this is these are the things, and I, I start at my head and I'll go to my feet so that you can actually know um, what I'm talking about and what I've used the herbs to help me to correct. Um, well, one, when I, when, I, when I was in the accident and I hit the steering wheel, it knocked my eyes off balance. So sometimes the light is a little bit too much for me. But um, so it knocked my eyes off balance. And they said that I had a closed head injury and I did notice things that I needed to do to correct, um, you know, kind of like just to correct that as well. Um, I had a torn ligament in my neck, which is still a torn ligament. So they suggest that I never ride a horse, but um, I'm very adventurous, so I try to figure out how can I do it, not that I can't do it, but how can I just correct a little bit or, you know, what can I do to be able to do that. But um, carpet tunnel in both my hands, I had, I, I um, uh, ruptured three parts of my back and I crushed my left leg. And so there were circulation issues, there were uh, memory issues, there were just a lot, a lot, a lot of challenges. I said that I dated my doctors for two years and they called me the, um, I guess, rebel patient or such because I refused to let their prognosis be my destiny. I kept saying that's not the destiny that God has given me and I knew that there was so much more that I needed to do and there, that there was just so much more purpose for my life. So I say that and I continue to talk about things like that because I want to be a living witness to you, a living testimony to let you know that it doesn't matter what the circumstance or doesn't matter what the challenge is, even if it's a physical or a, um, if it's a, a disability in physical or mental and no matter what the cause was, you know, a lot of mine stem from going through domestic violence and you know, um, using different things to cope. But I talk about the herb talk because I want to bring these things to you. And it's not because I only read about them. The majority of the herbs that I'm bringing to you, I take on a daily basis. And I, you know, or I learn about them so that they can help you because everything that happened to me may not be your story. But at least you know, you know, I'm dissecting myself here so that I can let you know that no matter what the challenge, you can overcome it. You know, I, I'm, I, I, strongly in my faith and in my prayer life and that's why we talk about mind body and spirit but let's get on to this all cell salt which is a wonderful wonderful mineral it's a mineralizer it is a food it's a blood cleanser 
a lymphatic cleanser and it relieves cellular congestion. It's a combination herb. With a combination herb, um, it includes bladder rack, Atlantic kelp, arrowroot, and Irish moss. And we'll get into each one of those um, individually when we bring up that specific herb as the topic for herb talk. But I'm going to give you a little bit about how it influences the body. The combination, or yeah, the combination has a seafood taste and is most interesting because it has all of the 13 organic tissue salts which are found in the body, okay? Each different type of tissue in the body contains a different concentration of mineral salts and elements which make up its construction and ensure its proper function. The combination contains all of them. It is truly a source of food for every cell in the body. Organic minerals will replace inorganic mineral buildup in the body and this combination excels as a cleanser for that reason, okay? The salts break up congestion in the cells and the fluid that surrounds them. This could be described as a type of chelation therapy. Not only is the cell, not only is the cell choking accumulation removed, the new minerals and elements are right there to replace worn out parts. Okay? So this is a tremendous body cleansing cell. And something else that you may not know is that our urine and our stool should not have a odor. Okay? It's the toxins that are coming out of your body. And when you cleanse the body, and we'll go with later on into how we cleanse the body as far as a, um, a five or a ten day cleanse, and it's a natural organic cleanse. And also we'll talk about how to nourish your body and how to continuously detox your body. Because we're always exposed to the different elements in the air. When we go out our front door, we're exposed to the elements and the, and the toxins that we breathe in. If we're drinking unclean water, meaning my water of choice is steam distilled water. If you're not drinking steam distilled water, there may be some um, inorganic materials in that water that also clog your cells and, and cause a toxic environment in your body. If you're not drinking at least half your body weight in steam distilled water every day, you are creating an acid environment, which is an acid environment which is susceptible for all types of conditions. So all cell salt is a great part of, we'll also bring to you our body management system, which will help you. And these things that I'm bringing to you are are just slow changes because you can't go just straight from you know a a high um, acid toxic kind of um, living to just automatically saying I'm dumping all of this and I'm starting over here but you can gradually start adding these things into your daily regime and it'll help you um, I talk about I'm going to start talking about my grandchildren a little bit um, one of my grandsons who is five years old he is I believe he's going to be the next um, 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 Dr. Jaden, <laughs> because he follows me with my regime, and he asks me, um, you know, um, he calls me Buka, and he says, Buka, where's my alfalfa? Or Buka, where's my, he knows that olive leaf is good for your cold, so whenever he's sn sn sniffling or, or what have you, he said, I need some olive leaf. So if a baby can pick up these terms and, and learn what these herbs are about, you know, we can too, and we can live a healthy happy natural life. So I thank you for watching until next time. All right and for this segment we talk about wealth and this is um, segment is called Wealth Talk. Fortress is the social media network that pays and we talked about that in a couple of episodes and we're going to continuously bring that um, platform to you because it's a wonderful awesome way for us to start building a fortress around ourselves to give us some financial stability. Money is a defense and a shield. No matter how you look at it, in this society, in this world, we need to accumulate wealth. We need to accumulate, and Fortress being such a platform that is simple as ABC123, there is a $10 membership, and with that $10 membership, it opens up so many different ways for you to be able to uh, generate revenue. And it's not a get-rich-quick scheme, it's not a pyramid, it's not any of those things. It's a, it's a business platform that helps you to generate, um, generate monies through what you do every day. You refer people to uh, Costco, Sam's Club, you refer people to the movie theaters, you refer people all over. Every day, we all are guilty of that. 
people say, oh, well, I don't like to talk to people. Uh, I beg to differ because we talk to people every day. If somebody looks at you and says, wow, I like that sweater that you have on. You're so quick to say where you got that sweater from, or I like that cologne, or I like those, whatever it is, you know, you refer those people out. I talk about Black Panther a lot because it's one of my favorite movies. Um, I sent, you know, I saw it, I sent people out to the movie theaters, and everybody got paid about that. Now, if you really stop for a minute, and stop walking around here asleep, because that's what I say we do, when we just go on autopilot and we start doing things, we go into an autopilot mode. Think about this. I refer people to go see Black Panther. Loved the movie, loved it, loved it, loved it. But who got paid? It was my referral. Shouldn't I have gotten something from that? Maybe a referral, maybe something, maybe even some popcorn. I don't know. I should have got something for a referring. But think about it. The actors got paid. The concession stands got paid. The everything. Everybody got paid except for the person that referred it. So with Fortress, it's a simple social media network that pays. And I think that it's a wonderful platform that opens up the doors to, um, to, to, to all of us. It's a way for you to send your referrals to the network and the company says, thank you, I acknowledge your work in this, and they pay you for it. And, and that's pretty much, that's, that's the platform. I've had people to ask, how do I turn this into a fundraiser? It is a wonderful way to, to be able to raise funds, just like when you go to Krispy Kreme Donuts, for example. They have a fundraising program where you sell a certain amount of donuts or what have you, and they give some back to the schools or back to the students. Um, my grandchildren bought in a, a uh, pizza thing or something. It was like $6 or something. You buy a pizza, and the you know, school benefits from that pizza sale. Well, the same thing with Fortress. It's a membership. It's a $10 membership. The only difference is that when you buy that box of pizza, you eat that, you buy that pizza, you give your money, you eat that pizza, and that's it. Nothing else, right? Or well, the school gets a couple dollars for it or what have you. In this, if I have a child that is in a, just say a PTA group, okay, and they need uniforms for, you know, or monies for a trip, or they need monies for, for something. Maybe you have 20 members in, in the PTA group. What's so wonderful about this Using for utilizing Fortress platform or Fortress membership as a fundraiser is that you open it if you have um, it only takes a social security number or a tax ID number. That organization opens up a ten dollar membership, and all of its members come under that membership. Now, what's wonderful about it is that okay, you all donated ten dollars. Okay, you've all given ten dollars, but you all also have a membership. So you benefit from the membership. So it's a win-win. You benefit from actually helping that organization to raise funds. I think it's a wonderful thing for the churches. And as soon as we get this out to the churches, and I do have some churches that actually have come aboard, and as we explain it, they're like, wow, this is wonderful. See, I believe in win-win situations. I believe in creating a win-win. If we all come together and can come together, not if, when, we all come together as a community, we all benefit. And why not? Why should it just be one a, a, a pyramid example? The people at the top make all the money, and the people down here help them to make all the money, but don't really reap the benefits from it. If you're a church, I mean, listen carefully. If you're a church that care about your people, care about even your bottom line, start a fortress membership throughout your organization. When you do that, everybody wins because now your members, not only can they um, receive a residual income from the other memberships and as the memberships keep coming in the church which is here continues to get monies they continue to get the referral fees from all the people but the people also benefit not only now does that help your people to increase their net worth but it also helps them with their tithing as well I mean that's just a that's just a little added bonus but it helps them to be able to tithe without them taking and putting in my electric bill money and I don't know how I'm gonna get it how I'm gonna get it back but I put my electric bill money in and then now when I go home my children have no electricity this says here's a practical way for you to bring your money and help the church but you also get paid with as with the membership and I just think that's a wonderful win-win it's nothing it's all it's clean it's, it's, it's clean and it's simple but the same thing I say for the students and I have some some um, young adults that are in college and I know when I was in college you know, it was um, it was tough. 
you know, when I was in college, it was really tough and, you know, balancing money, but, you know, um, more month than money. And, you know, we were all trying to figure out how we were going to get a pizza or how we were going to get some, some noodles and, and what have you. But with this, a college student can pay their $10 membership and they can talk to their other um, fellow uh, students about the membership. And as people continue to come in, Fortress continues to pay them, to pay them that referral fee. If they want to buy something that's on the Fortress platform, they get a discount because your membership, you benefit from the membership. You don't have to buy anything. You never have to sell anything. All of these benefits are added benefits that I'm, t that I'm talking to you about. And then um, one of the other things, if, you're, if you have a small business and you want to um, um, promote your business, you get 100% of the profit. A hundred percent. That is unheard of. I'm telling you, Fortress will be a household name very, very shortly because the, the one thing that, um, that I do want to say, a lot of people say if it's too good to be true, then it is. But think about this. You have to put your work in. You have to still refer people. I mean, you know, you still have to refer people. And as you refer people to a wonderful uh, membership, let me tell you about one of the products that I really love on the Fortress platform. You know, everybody's into this fitness craze now. And so Fortress has a sweat vest and the sweat arms that, you know, a lot of people are into fitness. Well, they have that on the Fortress platform. And when you're a member, you get that 